Welcome to another episode of Evolution, Nova Scotia's martial arts. I am your host, Dwayne Robuchot. In Japan during the late 1920s, a man by the name of Morihei Yoshiba developed a martial art that emphasizes harmony, spirit, and energy. It would become a world-renowned martial art practiced all over the globe. It would become known as Aikido. Aikido has its roots deep in Japanese martial arts, culture, and philosophy. And as a martial art, it is concerned not only with fighting proficiency, but with the betterment of daily life. This mental aspect is of key importance to Aikido practitioners and is at the core of its very existence. Tonight on Evolution, we journey to Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, where we found Sensei James Constable and his students at the Lunenburg Aikikai. Sensei Constable opened us up to the world of Aikido, where we got to see up close the etiquette, the techniques, the randori, the weapons, and just what makes Aikido the most powerful martial art that it is. Tonight on Evolution, we take a journey into the way of unifying life energy. Here is Aikido. to move in, take up the space, take the center line, move back in, okay, hey! Welcome to Eastlink Community TV. Tonight we are in beautiful Lunenburg, Nova Scotia at the Lunenburg Aikikai Studio of Aikido. Joining me now is Sensei James Constable, fifth dan in Aikido. Thank you for having us, Sensei. Thank you for coming. It's nice to have you here. Sensei, you've been around a long time in Aikido, over 25 years now. How did your, where did your journey in Aikido begin? How did it start for you? I started Aikido in Bermuda. Um, my teacher is Colin Smith Sheehan. Um, I had been studying Kung Fu for a number of years, and my Kung Fu teacher was leaving the island and said if there's one thing you should do besides study with him is study Aikido with Sensei Smith. So I walked in his door. And what year was that? 92, I think, somewhere early 90s. So from Kung Fu to Aikido, you've been training a long time. You have an excellent background, bringing it here to Lunenburg. Uh, from Bermuda, how did it turn about from there? What was your journey to bring you to Lunenburg? My wife's family has a Nova Scotia connection, and we were looking to leave Bermuda just as a change of lifestyle. And so Lunenburg was a natural fit for us, and I opened school because there wasn't one. <laughs> Excellent, good start. Yeah. How big is Aikido in Eastern Canada? Uh, they're uh, bigger than you might expect. There's a handful of schools. Um, there are, I have my dojo here, obviously. I have two students, uh, one in PEI and one in Fredericton, who have their own dojos. And a good friend of mine who's going to be here tonight has a dojo in Halifax. In addition to that, there are some Canadian Aikido Federation dojos, one in Halifax, one in Anaganesh. And there's a new dojo in Canning, um, also very high quality Aikido and worth visiting if you're in that area. Leap over to Newfoundland and there's a couple there as well. So it's very big here in Eastern Canada, in the Maritimes, and quite large in Nova Scotia under your command. I say it's very big. My wife says there's 20 people. <laughs> you're modest. We have a lot of, we have, there are several small dojos. And I think what we've been very lucky to be able to put together is we all get along, we all support each other's events. So when we have big seminars, we can put 50, 60, 70 people on the mat from five or six schools that have student bodies of 10, 15, 20. And you're learning from each other. And we're learning from each other. You know, we all have different backgrounds, different styles, and different stuff to bring. Speaking of that, one of the unique features of Aikido versus more contemporary martial arts is you don't do competitive competitive tournaments it is more the cooperative training can you explain that yeah i mean the philosophy of aikido was always about competition creates a winner and a loser and we we're just trying to get beyond that concept so here we just practice and in order for everybody to get better the room's goal has got to be to support each person so we all improve which is kind of a unique way to interact with human beings in this day of Great. Competitive sports, competitive workplace, competitive everything. 
Um, so it's a, it's a different kind of a way of doing things. So each student, each teacher, each instructor would teach a, a level below and then each, a level above and so forth. Everybody's very cooperative in the sense of what you have to offer. One level learns from the other. And when you're practicing, you're practicing. You can see it here. You're, you pair off in partners. And, you know, there's a fine line between how do you push your partner to the next level, how do you support them, how do you challenge them, how do you teach them. So even as individuals between two students, the goal is for each of these kids or adults to help the person you're practicing with do the technique better. Would you say that's a very uh, cooperative environment for kids to work with other kids, to learn to step out from being so self-centered or selfish, that sort of thing? You start to create the giver, the contributor, is that the? I think so, I think it's been great for kids. And, and our kids program, as you can see, is quite strong. And we have a very low rate of losing kids attrition is that a word right, right. Yeah, very, word. Yeah. <laughs> so you know we've been very lucky with that so you don't lose them to video games once you got them no it seems we seem to keep them we've even moved a handful up from the kids program to the adults program excellent yeah. excellent sensei aikido tremendous cultural history where did it begin what can you tell us about the origins and how it leads us to here today it's a Japanese martial art, obviously. Um, it began, it came out of other disciplines. Uh, the Aikiru, a lot of Aikijutsu techniques, a lot of weapon work techniques. Um, Morihei Weishiba, who we refer to as O-sensei, who is up there on the Kamiza, amalgamated his martial background. And he was also a very spiritual person who was trying to reconcile his spiritual beliefs with his martial background and create something that is designed not to injure the other person, to, on a martial level, to take something to neutralize it without having to cause damage. So it, it all came out of trying to combine his two worlds of martial and spiritual. And so from Japan, and then in the 60s, a lot of his original students were sent abroad to spread Aikido around the world. So people, some of the people who did that were Yamada Sensei, Chiba Sensei, several of the Japanese original students came to the US and that's how it came to North America and Europe with different people. And so, you know, my teacher studied directly with those people. I studied directly with some of those people before they passed away. And it's just trickled down from there. like it because it's not competitive um, and any martial art is only as good as the instructor who's there and for the kids class I'm not the instructor so you look behind you you see Jason he's very good at rallying these kids and creating a positive environment and that's what they take home with them. Okay. It's been a, a fantastic experience um, one that um, that I would say I wasn't I didn't feel as though I was ready for um, but turns out that um, you know, after a year of feeling things out, I, I found a groove uh, after doing this for a year and um, the kids kept coming back, which was a, a positive thing. It's a good sign. A, a good sign. <laughs> and um, and it's, it's turned into a, a pretty good thing and it's, it's a huge, huge part of my life and it's been a huge learning experience for me. Uh, really, I, I, I would say that I get more out of this than, than the kids do. 
Um, so it's a little bit uh, selfish of me to be doing this, but uh, uh, no, it's been a fantastic journey and I, I um, really appreciate the opportunity. I appreciated it when Sensei said, why don't you start a, a kid's class? Um, and it's been a, um, a great, um, great thing. Excellent, excellent. Your Aikido journey began here at Lunenburg Aikikai, correct? It did, yeah, yeah. So in June, June 1st, 2010, I, uh, I walked in the dojo, um, knew absolutely nothing about Aikido, uh, wanted a martial art. I just was looking for a martial art in the area, tried a few out, and uh, walked in, um, watched a class. Um, sensei had a presence, um, that, uh, he, had a, he had a presence that, that I instantly kind of recognized, and I said I could learn something from this person, and I started Fantastic. Thursday and now that. today, you're a Nidan, second degree black belt in Aikido. Yes. Uh, you've become quite proficient in order to be an instructor as well. Uh, was this where you were looking to go, or did you expect to get this far? No, I, I had no preconceived idea <laughs> of, of where it was going to, to go. Um, so, no, I, I didn't expect to, to be here, to be teaching kids, but here I am. And your journey continues. Excellent. Uh, when you look at how do children react to Aikido? What is their initial, how do they react? Well, I would say that it's um, totally depending on the child that, that we're talking about. So they, I find they all react, react differently. Um, some are uh, instantly focused and, and instantly uh, like a sponge, interested in taking every single aspect of, of what I'm doing in. Um, others, uh, it takes a little, little bit of time for them to, to grow comfortable with, with things and, and how, um, how, how we, we do things on the mat and the etiquette. Um, and others, it's not right for them. Uh, so they, they come and they, they take a term and, and they're gone. And uh, it's similar to the adults. Speaking of etiquette, uh, we're looking at a lot of parents wanting something from the martial arts for their kids. So how do they benefit from training in Aikido? What's one of the biggest carryaways that you see overall? I think there's a lot of things. Um, the, the structure, uh, so it's a little different from a gym class. Uh, so there's a, there's a structure to it, there's a, a bit of a ceremony to it. Um, so as you saw in the class, there's um, there's always a, a beginning of a class to kind of shed ourselves of the things that, that happen outside of the dojo space. Um, and, and at the end, uh, there's, a, there's a finish um, so that we can go back to uh, what's, what's out, out there on the dojo space. and um, Outside the dojo space, I mean. So, um, so there's definitely that. Uh, so quite a bit different from, from a gym class or any type of class that they would normally take. Um, but, you know, there's, there's so many other things, you know, in terms of Aikido, they learn how to fall, um, which I think is pretty, pretty important. So we do a lot of falling. Um, there's an, an immense amount of falling and learning how to properly fall and take care of yourself and get back up. Um, interacting with other human beings, uh, you know, in a, in a physical way, um, I think is a, is a great benefit to kids, but not only kids, the adults as well that practice Aikido. What is the one thing you see that's the most consistently rewarding thing in the children for you as an instructor? Um, the, the change that I see over time. So, so when, I, when I witness um, a child coming in and they know nothing of Aikido uh, and they, they know nothing of what we're going to do and they're um, timid initially uh, and they they may have a, a difficult time with certain things and as they progress and as we get to test time and as I see them shine you know and some of the things that we, we've been practicing it is extremely rewarding generally brings tears to my eyes at the end of, of a term um, that I have to try to hold back um, so that's definitely the the most beneficial part of it just to see them getting better at something and uh, you know I do a lot of talking about just trying your best it's not about it's not about doing it exactly the way that I want them to. It's just I just want to see them try their best. Um, and uh, when I see that and when I see, you know, some progression and smile on their face when they feel as though they've done it, uh, it's a pretty great feeling and it makes all this worthwhile. We have one knee.
Remember, it's important to stay in your lane. Keep going in one. Joining me is Charlie Wilson Nidan in Aikido, and you've been practicing Aikido for a long time, isn't that right? For about 12 years. Where did it begin for you? In Whitehorse. I started practicing in Whitehorse. Of all places? Yep. So you've been practicing traditional Aikido for quite some time now. You're a Nidan. Yep. What's your journey like in Aikido? Um, well, the first thing that drew me in was that it's, it's very gymnastic, and I come from a gymnastics background. So that was kind of the hook that pulled me in. Um, it's very dynamic, and, um, and I just loved how graceful it was. And over time, that, that was what pulled me in, but over time, it, my relationship to Aikido changed. Um, but that's still what I love about it most. What is some of your favorite parts of Aikido? What, what are some of the most compelling parts that keeps drawing you back? Um, one of the things that I really enjoy is uh, the seminars. So where we get to train with different teachers and different students of Aikido. As a female practitioner of martial arts in a very violent world to this day, how do you feel about the martial arts training for women today? If you're looking for a short solution, if you're looking for a few dynamic moves that might protect you in a difficult spot, um, I wouldn't say Aikido would be the martial art of choice. But if you want to learn presence and um, confidence uh, over t and, uh, and a bunch of techniques that really work over time, Aikido is definitely, um, definitely has a lot to offer. Joining me is John Powers, Aikidoist here in Lunenburg, Aikikai. Welcome to Geesland Community TV, Mr. Powers. Thanks very much, Dwayne. Nice to be here. Mr. Powers, you're a shodan in Aikido. How long have you been at Aikido? I think it's about 11 years now. Yeah. So you didn't start in your 20s. You didn't start when you were 10 years old. So talk to us. 55. What? I started when I was 55. You started, you started at age 55. Yep. This is good for health. This is good for the body. I see you move in action. You're very fluid. Would you recommend it to anybody that's a 50, 55 and up to get started? Absolutely. It's, uh, it, it tends to be um, you know, not as fashionable as mixed martial arts these days because we don't go flying right into things. And it's a, it's a slow build, which is part of the great thing about training into you know, longer in a life. I mean, it's a slower build, and you can do it at your own pace, whatever age you are would be my opinion. I mean, there's guys and gals on the mat that are lots older than me. It's just most places I go, I tend to be in the top echelon of, of ages, but, but there's lots of people that are training into their 70s, 80s. You're one of Sensei Constable's original students, the very one, the first one, am I right? I was at the very first class back in April 2017, which was in the fire hall actually here in Lunenburg. It's a small space. There were 36 people started, I think, on that first day, and I've been here all the time, ever since. And, the, and there's only a few left from that original 36. Well, I'm the only one from that class, actually. Um, John, who I believe we talked to a little while ago, was shortly afterwards. But uh, yeah, I'm the very first student. Excellent. Still here. <laughs> You've been practicing now for several years. Aikido is very important to you, obviously. What type of description would you, you give to how important it really is? I would say Aikido really is one of the three pillars of my life. So family, work and Aikido really are 
the most important things to me. Um, my practice is very important for my physical and spiritual development. Um, it's been life-changing, actually. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am now if I hadn't found Aikido. And it was interesting that uh, I was really looking for something and then the advert was in the paper and the timing was just right. It's almost, it's almost this every, all the, everything came together at exactly the right time. The universe was telling me, this is what you need to do. And I was hooked from day one. This is a phenomenal practice. We have a really good dojo, really great people here, a good community, and Sensei is fantastic. You would recommend Aikido to anybody that may be seeking something in their life, something that might be missing. Is Aikido a possible answer where it's been such a benefit to you? Yes, yes. It's, it's a very interesting martial art. It's, it's more about the harmony and the blending than direct confrontation. And that's something you can apply to so many aspects of life as a whole, uh, to the benefit of everyone. You're benefiting yourself and you're being able to guide other people through difficulties and applying the principles of Aiki and the harmony and the blending to situations at work, situations with family and situations in life. As a whole, it means everything comes together. Everything is unified. You're getting the shamanji view of All ages, uh, male, female, whatever your body type, whatever your history is, there's a place for you in the practice of Aikido somewhere. Um, you can tailor your training to your personality, to your injuries, to your lifestyle, and still find a way forward. Thank you for watching tonight's episode of Evolution, Nova Scotia's martial arts. Join us next week as we journey to Mahone Bay for an Aikido Master's Seminar.